Now, if we don't support the Nicaraguan democratic resistance and ignore the communist threat that exists right now in Central America, what, in your opinion, what in, what in your opinion do you think might happen in the next 20 years in this hemisphere, and maybe throughout the world? It won't take 20 years, Senator. It will take a whole lot less. The consolidation of the communist regime in Managua will result in the spread of that revolution, as they themselves have advocated. You will see democracy perish in the rest of Central America. If the communists get control of Central America, which I assure you they will if we leave Nicaragua as a base for the Cubans and the Russians, then they'll be in a position to throw 50 or 80 million refugees into the United States. They can break our economy and never fire a shot. If you deeply believe that this is a communist menace that is going to march from Nicaragua up to Texas and uh, Topeka and soon take over the United States, um, maybe it would justify the means. But if you look back over the history of this thing, each one of these crises has not. Look at Angola. We were told 10 years ago that if we allowed a Marxist government to take over in Angola, we'd never get another oil tanker out of the Persian Gulf. But they would disrupt the sea lanes. Well, the Marxist government did take over in Angola. We were told that if we lost Vietnam and Indochina, that the whole row of dominoes would fall. What were the results? When we lose the war, all the dominoes that were supposed to fall, instead of falling, they become, in, uh, just a few years later, what the World Bank, our own institution, calls the economically strongest uh, area, region in the world. Counsel, I don't believe that anyone who served in, in Vietnam, who saw what happened as a consequence of our efforts, when, in my opinion, we won all the battles and then lost the war, could ever be unaffected by that unless they were totally insensitive. I would also point out that we didn't lose the war in Vietnam. We lost the war right here in this city. Well, what North was saying there was that America's real enemies are inside this country. And that would explain why North spent so many years under Bush's auspices preparing contingency plans for rounding up large numbers of dissenters if we ever go into another war. Now, you would have thought that the committee would have been outraged by North's sort of declaration of war with a large segment of the American people, but instead of their disagreeing with them, most of them actually agreed with him. The fear of an enemy within is not new in American government. In 1942, amidst the hysteria following the bombing of Pearl Harbor, over 100,000 Americans of Japanese descent were rounded up and put into mass prison camps. They were accused of no crime, given no trial, but remained incarcerated for several years. This internment of Japanese Americans is thought by many to be one of the darkest moments in American history. But could it happen again? Concomitant with this whole operation and Oliver North's involvement in it was a plan to suspend the United States Constitution as they referred to it, in, under a state of national emergency on the part of the president. Where that comes from is a specific program uh, called Rex 84, Readiness Exercise, number 84, or for 1984. And it was undertaken under the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Now, this was a, a national executive branch agency that was originally set up at the very end of the Carter administration to do nothing more than to coordinate the national flood relief, hurricane relief, Red Cross stuff, things, to get the, the government programs all brought under one umbrella so they could coordinate them. When Reagan was elected to the presidency, he installed Louis Giafrida as head of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Giafrida was an old, cold warrior from Reagan's California days whose specialty was suppression of unrest and dissent. Giafrida, North, and George Bush began to turn FEMA into an instrument of domestic anti-terrorism. You're dealing with a group of people in the Reagan administration who equated political dissent with treason and who cannot differentiate between emergency procedures, which I think everyone agrees are necessary, and suppressing political dissent. And with North and Poindexter and Casey, you had a group of people who saw Americans who disagree with them as the enemy. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, 
NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in, in which he had worked. I believe yeah, that it was. Yeah, I but most, I to get may his I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke the military, and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. If the president ordered a direct strike into Central America, which was to be codenamed Operation Night Train, we got the documents on it, that they would set up a concomitant domestic readiness exercise or war game scenario called Rex 84, the main rationale of which was to round up 400,000 undocumented Central American aliens within a two-week period of time and incarcerate them in 10 military detention camps. They rehearsed this, but of course, if you were rehearsing the rounding up of half a billion aliens, you have also rehearsed uh, the rounding up of half a million critics of the uh, administration. be very, very wrong to think that these kind of illegal operations will stop just by Ali North's disappearing, because uh, the motives to generate these kind of agendas are still there. And the powers that were collected in his name, his office, as far as I know, they are still there. In times of passion and in times of great fear, what to the uh, eyes of the person and the mind of a person in time of relative peace and stability seem impossible, become very real, very logical, very possible. One of the most threatening developments surrounding these revelations is the use of money raised through illegal activities to influence the American electoral process. There are growing indications that large amounts of offshore money are being funneled to conservative political action committees to mount campaigns against liberal congressmen up for re-election. They have set themselves up as an independent government outside of our country's shores, operating out of private corporations with hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal, and they will not be told no. Not only they won't be told no by individual congressmen, because they will smash them politically, They've moved money into these packs from offshore to help fund these campaigns against people who don't support their policies. We've come actually full circle where these people over on the hill are intimidated that they're afraid of having a whole campaign launched against them in their congressional district. Hey, you know, in the 70s, there was a congressman or two who really stood up to the CIA. There was Congressman Pike. Uh, who brought out a very, very critical report on what the CIA had been doing. And that man was destroyed. His report never even got to Congress. I mean, there was Senator Clark, for example, of the Clark Amendment, which stopped operations in Angola, pro prohibited the CIA from operating there. A lot of money came into his state in the next election. They said it was South African money. 
who knows? And he was defeated. Senator Church, who led the overall critique of CIA operations, a lot of money came into his state of Idaho in the next election, and he was defeated. So congressmen can see who has the power and who has the money in these things. And every now and then, one or two of them will stand up and oppose them. But they need an awful lot of encouragement from the people before they're going to take on such powerful enemies. Do you think the Iran-Contra scandal will have an effect on future government operations? No, I think it will be more the same. I don't think that it's going to have much of an effect at all. I just think that they'll be more careful next time. They will continue to carry on covert operations. I think this has been going on forever. They make laws which are for us that they don't seem to be able to, uh, they don't apply them to themselves very often. And who is going to inhibit them? The gangsters that are running this country is going to inhibit somebody. What's happening here, my friends, is a major deception, a major deception which is in process as we stand and talk tonight, a major deception in the same way that the Warren Commission was a major deception worked upon the American people, the same way that the Watergate investigation was a major deception worked upon the American people. Just like the bombing, the secret bombing of Cambodia was kept secret and was a deception worked upon the American people. How long, how long are we going to stand for being deceived in this manner? We will have to make a decision as a country, both Congress and executive, that we will not tolerate this kind of activity and we will go after the perpetrators. These people do have faces when we talk about the shadow government or we talk about the secret team. It's not something totally amorphous. These people are identifiable and can be brought to justice. Assassination, drug smuggling. If they had pursued that line of questioning, uh, they would have soon gotten themselves into a position where they would have had to impeach someone. They could track that right back into the White House. They could put it at least right, un right under the nose of Ronald Reagan. This is the major constitutional crisis since the Civil War. You have a president who is unaccountable and says that uh, it's his interpretation of what laws he'll select to obey. When you have that, you have a constitutional crisis. And all of these things that have been alleged for years and have been speculated and have been charged and have been consistently denied are being confirmed. And these documents have shown uh, an incredible array of efforts, all of which were denied to Congress repeatedly uh, and flat out lies by top members of the administration and by the president. It is not uh, a CIA gone wild or a secret government operating it on its own. It's a group of people doing things with the authority of and the, at the direction of the White House. Covert operations have never done this country any good. They may be of momentary advantage to the people who are in power at a particular moment, but in terms of the interests of this country as a whole, they have proven disastrous. There isn't a single one in 30 years that you can point to and say, well, that was one that we are now more secure, better off, and happier as a result of. Every one of them has in its own way contributed to the deterioration of security in the world that we live in. And so it's really time to stop them. Instead of operating within rules and law, we have been supplying lethal weapons to terrorist nations, trading arms for hostages, involving the U.S. government in military activities in direct contravention of the law, diverting public funds into private pockets and secret unofficial activities, selling access to the president for thousands of dollars, dispensing cash and foreign money orders out of a White House safe, accepting gifts and falsifying papers to cover it up, altering and shredding national security documents lying to the Congress. Now, I believe that the American people understand that democracy cannot survive that kind of abuse. There was a time 